Hello all and welcome to another F122 My Team Career Mode video. My name is Flabbergast Gaming and welcome to another video on my My Team Career Mode. Episode 11 I believe for the Austrian Grand Prix here at Spielberg, the Red Bull Ring. Well, it's a very, very crucial episode here because not only is it going to be the um, well, uh, one of the second of the three sprint races, the three sprint rounds that we have this season to offer potentially extra points for us, it is also going to be the the potentially the final race for our teammate Teo Porcher in Formula One. That being said, there's a good chance we're going to um, maintain him and focus on developing him as a um, better driver in the future. There's a better, there's more of a chance that we're doing that instead of completely wasting the potential that Nico Hulkenberg, who is probably favourite for that seat a couple of races ago. But Teo Portrait has upped his game around Canada. Through Britain, it wasn't the best. I'd say if he gets a decent sprint in, the race wouldn't matter and I think we'll keep Teo Portrait and focus on upgrading facilities in the future. In the background you can see me completing this autocross for the Pirelli hot lap. Hopefully we're going to finish this lap well and get gold. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all of the big news heading into this race. I believe we've got some sponsors to renew potentially heading into it, maybe not, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that this race is going to be probably one of the biggest races of the season. That was very, very, very close, did you see that? And we just about got gold there, we just about got gold, Re really, really, really close. So, yeah, sheesh, look at that. Um, one hundredth of a second in it. Anyway, this is actually heading into qualifying because it is a sprint race weekend. We don't head into what we managed to get since um, well, since the practice sessions because the whole practice sessions haven't finished yet, and we're heading straight into qualifying. So my first flying lap here out Austria, and needless to say, it started fine, took a lot of speed into the first corner, heading down into this corner, put a lot of speed into that, and so far it was a very, very good lap, I think I was nailing a lot of these corners, then I'm not sure what it was later on in the lap, maybe it was just my, maybe I just had bad acceleration out of some of these corners, accelerated too hard or something, but the well, the car did do quite well, and I thought at the time, oh, it was, an, oh, it was quite a good lap, you know. But then, actually later on, it started raining, and so I wasn't aware of this, and at this rate, it was intermediate weather, so I couldn't gain any time on our previous best, and our previous best put us in 21st. I thought it was a good lap at first, but... Clearly I was mistaken, which was very, very annoying, but 21st it is, and I thought that, well, we probably could have improved on it through some of the final corners, I think, but yeah, it was, it was really weird. I looked at the AI, and it's the AI setting that I normally have it on, um, if any of you guys want to tell me why please do but yeah we lost the rivalry to Daniel Ricardo which was very very annoying we got a bunch of resource points luckily for us and a lot of discounts we completed all the practice sessions we could and so we're going to use this 100% um, discount on the drag reduction so that's very very nice we're also going to try we're going to try and get another upgrade on, but we just don't have the capacity to do that. What we do have is, after we renew our contract potentially, the money to 
um, fix that in the future. Welcome to today's sprint. This is shaping up to be another fantastic weekend. the back of a fantastic qualifying session it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside considering the rest of the grid we have Sainz Russell Sergio Perez and Magnussen Bottas Fernando Alonso Mick Schumacher and Lando Norris Ocon Gasly Guan Yu Zhou and Ricardo Albert Stroll, Sir Lewis Hamilton and Theo Porcher, Sonoda, Vettel, Thomas and Nicholas Latifi. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We will soon find out. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. All right, we are on the grid for the second sprint race and well, the second sprint race of the season, the first race here at Austria. It should be a good race. Just a, media, a medium stint, pretty much the entire race. 12 laps. And yeah, let's see if we can get something here. Maybe get some points or even better. It's going to be a real challenge from where we're starting. And remember, the top eight get points instead of the top ten. But it's lights out and away we go here at Spielberg. We get an absolutely lovely launch. And we manage to get up the inside of several drivers heading into turn one. Great start from us. We are right behind Daniel Ricciardo. And we are making a good attempt to use our overtake to get past. It's going to be a massive dive bomb. And she showers humongous from us. Great, great job. Virtual safety cars deployed though. I'm not sure why. I'm guessing there might be some okay, used debris potentially. Increasing risks. Oh, safety car, a full safety car. So that's going to definitely put a swing to things going forward. Sergio Perez is one of the drivers who probably lost their front wing heading into turn three. And so he has to pit, and that elevates us up in P10. Lewis Hamilton, a driver who got caught out by the weather, and I don't think he made it into Q2, which is a bit surprising. He's out of the race, and that's going to put him overtaken, down in 22nd second place. Uh, and he's also going to get a good penalty flag. as well, because he has to change the component in Park Verme. It's a lovely little um, overtake there on Valtteri Bottas. Good job from us, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're only one position away from points here. Or at least a singular point. Can we achieve the unthinkable to go from 21st on the grid okay, to P8 or better in only 12 laps around a track which overtaking is quite easy but we don't have too long to do it. It's quite a short race to be honest because the lap is just um, just below a minute and ten seconds. Valtteri Bottas okay, gets past us. Speaking of people getting past us, there goes Esteban Ocon. We want to try and cover up, so we are no going to try go back up the, um, the inside and regain the position. We get the power down quicker than Esteban Ocon can, but he t um, takes the speed and with some more DRS from him, and a lot of ERS usage, I'm sure, down that straight. He gives us a great fight, and a gr and it's great defence from us to maintain our P10 position. Okay, we can't the car quite ahead find the pace though to seconds. gain enough um, enough time to catch up with P8. So we're actually losing time at a considerable rate. So. You know, maybe, ooh, that's a bit tight. 
Oh, it's, we're just about going to get past Gasly there. Good job from us. Uh, yeah. So, we genuinely do not have the pace in it seems. Which is quite annoying for us. For our sake, that is. Yellow flags behind Green us. Flag. Green Somebody flag. Somebody has an off there. Okay, the officials that, have deployed the safety Pierre car Gasly. due to multiple cars oh being dear. stopped on track. So, I suspect that Gasly may have had like an off or a crash or something. Albert's out now. Okay, that that's is mad. Five laps um, in remaining. Five wow, laps. all of it's kicking off here. 19 drivers from the 22 still remain. Three drivers are out, and it's only been 12 laps. Okay, the incident's been cleared. Let's now. get back Two up to racing Two laps sprint speed. to Come the on. end, inside of a sprint. That's going to be interesting. Can we make something out of this? Can we? Oh, now the grid's all packed up. Make a massive dive bomb into turn three here. But this is what we're going to try and do. We're going to try. We're just too far back to get Lando Norris and we get pinned on the turn. The rear diffuser's incurred some damage. You might start to feel the effects. And that's bad news for us. We are affected on the straight, it seems, almost. Because we get overtaken by both of the Alfa Romeos and he actually clipped the back of right, Joe Brand New. No damage by the car, luckily, but um, crucially, a lot of um, a lot of understeer heading into some of the higher speed corners, and we get passed by Ocon as a um, well, as a punishment for I am assuming just using too much curve on the outside of turn one. I'm assuming because that's the only place I can really think of getting um, floor damage, which is very very annoying. We get past Ocon, but he tags us, and we've sent in a spin, and we've been hit by Stroll um, to ruin our and his sprint. That is not it's good news. It's been an incident on track, but that officials are not good news, guys. Speed. That is very, very, very annoying. I'm quite upset about it, but, and you know, that's the end of the race. it is what it is. It's me. racing, and, you know, we might take an entirely new um, engine. We might not. It depends. Um, but, Either way, that is not good. That well, you know it is good. Teo Porcher getting P12, so very good job for him. It seems that he's quite strong in the sprint races so far this season, and you know that might have actually done it to renewing his contract. As you can see there, we were turning in quite early as an act of defence, and we gave. Well, he kind of caught us napping a bit, but. That gap was never really there. This is it then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. Not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn. The Nicky Lauda curve, as it was renamed in 2019, in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 meters above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of around 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into turn one or the tight uphill turn three. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday and it's put him on pole, edging out Max Verstappen who will start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid we have Russell, Mick Schumacher, Lando Norris and Bottas, Joe, Perez, Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo. Ocon, Vettel, Fernando Alonso, and Stroll, Thomas, Sonoda, Pierre Gasly, and Kevin Magnussen. They've taken a grid penalty. Theo Porcher, Latifi, Hamilton, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. Why don't we discuss Red Bull? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Here we go for the Austrian Grand Prix, the main event. I am very enthusiastic. I think we can do some big things due to some good penalties we 
we have managed to get up to P15. Rice lights out and away we go. In at Spielberg. It's a good launch initially. Lose out a bit compared to our rivals who are who have started ahead of us. Apparently we've got contact with Stroll. That's a bit of underbody damage for us, which is We're gonna tell our engineers to be quiet because we are aware that we have some slight Damage. There is yellow flags, I'm sure that's fine. I'm pretty sure, pretty certain it is. We get pushed a bit there, pushed off the track. The VSC is out, and so is Teo for chair. And now the safety car's out. I believe Teo just made a really bad, a really big mistake, hit somebody else, and really just ruined his race and potentially thrown away some points for us here. That is not what we need from our driver. Still, I think we might just keep him on. He's, he's been consistently bad, but I believe when that um, when the personnel department gets fixed in the his patch, at the time of recording, this hasn't been um, brought out yet. I believe that we can do something there. But we're going to try and make a big dive bomb whilst everybody's sponged up. We're going to make a triple dive bomb there. That is an absolutely same job there that we've managed to pull off and just about get P10 and probably running the points and starting with 15. Very, very good job for guys. We um, up the road we can see the two Alpha Romeos having a scrap um, against themselves. They are having a bit of a civil war it seems. Um, I'm not sure who that is who got ahead, I'm guessing though, is about to got us making an overtake on Joe Brand New. Copy that. And Perez, speaking of get overtaking Joe Brand New, has made his path, he has made his way past the Chinese driver. Heading anyway, we are heading into this fast corner. Ooh, that was a very, very close moment there with Daniel Ricardo. He gave us the uh, they look up the inside and go. Okay, Teo's like out of the race. Might have made an oopsie there, but luckily we managed to get back out just um, so we managed to get back out just in time. We go off the track there as a um as we get pushed off the track a bit there with a fast um, going like our inside. We didn't want to make contact. We don't want to be in either his or our race, especially whilst we're running in the points. We're defending from Ricardo and there's a bit of contact there, which is very annoying, but it is what it is. We're still going, plus it's all about let them race. So we're going to continue racing. Here comes Magnussen, he gets pinned in with Ricardo. We go out the inside. It's all kicking off. It's been an here incident on track, but officials are looking to push for safety car right now. We take back the position. Thank you very much. Now we're under attack from Ricardo again. He goes up on inside. We are going to sit back here and hope that we can get the better one out of that corner and potentially head into the next corner ahead. We're going to turn to the flat out left hand of King. We're getting caught up behind Ricardo. He tries his best to defend, and he does defend relatively well. We get caught up behind him, make, or pretty much just pushing him through the corner, in fact. And we're going to make a very, very swift cutback on the Australian. It's a good move from us. And we are still neck and neck, though, going into what I believe that is turn five. Yep, I'm pretty certain it's turn five. Or turn 16, this is turn 7, I think. It's hard to tell around school well because there's a lot of flat out kinks. But with neck and neck heading through the penultimate corner, who's going to come out on top? It's Ricardo, or is it? We're going to go up the inside. He has to yield. We take too nice much move. speed for him, and we manage to take the position away from the Aussie. And speaking of the Aussie, he is under attack and he has been passed by the cars of heavy magnetic which is pretty pretty hard right now but the Dane is going to make a very big big challenge there we try to get the overspeed on the exit 
try and make the cutback work, but it doesn't always work, and that's a perfect example. With uh, um, ever so slightly under attack from Ricardo, we're going to box this. Carlos that's pushing hard, isn't that? Um, hopefully, one and only get stopped a bit earlier than what we were trying to do. We're trying to stretch this stint out a bit longer, and it seems that's what Danny Ricardo is trying to do. But anyway, in we come on lap 16 and looking to follow the nice green speak of the bevel, it's Daniel Ricardo. We're having a massive scrap with our ex-rival in the rivalry breakdown. And you know what, if we get the option, we are definitely choosing him as our rival. Again, we've just penetrated one of the Haas mechanics. It's a 2.4 second pit stop. We kind of missed our end. Up to speed now, let's get some heat into those tyres. And, oh my word, what has happened? We've been fighting Daniel Ricciardo so much in this race that whilst the other drivers are pitted, we have fallen to the back of the grid where only the likes of Lance Stroll and our arch rival, it seems, Daniel Ricciardo, lay. As well as Alex Alvin and I'm assuming Nicholas Rossifi. It's not a good day for the Canadians. It's not a good day for me or Ricardo because we're still fighting and we're going to make it all. Oh, that's a very, very nice piece of back to us. Let's go. That's actually the class. Um, yeah. Look at this. Um, still looking neck now. And Ricardo makes a bit of a mistake. And it through goes um, Stroll. Good job from him. And he's hoping to fight his way back to the point. Never going to happen, but, you know, it's always going to make things interesting going forward. Ricardo manages to get back past Mark Stroll, though, so that's good news for him. Um, to speaking of the devil, again, here seconds. he comes. Daniel Ricardo tries to make another overtake up the inside. Doesn't quite pay off now, does it, Daniel? You can't have my position, mate. I'm doing everything in my power not to give you my position. Just to show okay, or just to intimidate you. Down a place. So you make mistakes and let us score more points than you. But, oh, 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 that's very, very good driving and car control for me. A bit rash defending from him. I know I do things like it um, earlier in this race, but sheesh, that was a bit harsh. We go off the track as well as an act of defence and Stroll gets past us. We make the cut back on Daniel Ricciardo. But, yeah, and not much actually happened after that. We were losing time to Stroll, but we're gaining time on Ricciardo until... There appears to be an issue. We're currently investigating. Well, I was really... St I'm actually really, really stressing out about this one, guys. I hope it's just like a fuel mix issue. There is stuck in the mix, but that happens quite regularly to, well, or that's what it seems at least. I don't really like the sound of this one. I'm getting a bad vibes. I'm getting really bad vibes from this one. Okay, looks like a mechanical failure. We're going to have to ask you to find a safe spot to retire. Sorry about that, mate. Again, find somewhere safe to stop. We need you to retire. When I have bad vibes, I have bad vibes for a reason. Sheesh. We're out of the Austrian Grand Prix. That is going to definitely put a dent in our progress to get top five in the constructors. And, you know, that's not good news for our team. That's a double DNF. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria and a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they've secured here. Uh, 
Ugh. That was a very, very, very annoying, very annoying mistake. I, be, I didn't see what happened, but potentially grid penalties may affect us into France. I'm not sure what the decision would be, but I do think that that has cost us. Well, we weren't really going to do something, but it's just really, really annoying. We're still staying in our position in the championship, luckily, but that is a very, very annoying um, issue there with the car, and it cost us big time, unfortunately for us. We don't get any um, goal bonuses from any of our two sponsors, which is bad news, but luckily, the good news is, um, well, is that we don't have the money right now or in fact we do have the money no we don't we don't quite have the money to get Nico Hülkenberg on board with us we can't get Nico Hülkenberg unfortunately we don't have the money to we can try but I'm pretty certain that he will not want to sign with us if we only offer him half a million less than what his actual market value is so we're not gonna we're not gonna try and get into something that we don't want to to be honest if we want to develop a driver the best driver to develop is probably a young f2 talent and that driver is Teo Porcher our current driver and by now the patch has been done the patch has been brought in and so you can well, change or make a driver get better using the personnel so we're gonna re-sign with our teammate for the rest of the season we won't be keeping them on I'm pretty certain for next season but we will be keeping them on because overall I think that's the best strategy so yeah yeah, a very tricky decision though, a very, very tricky decision. So, yeah, it was the ES, the energy store that actually ended up failing for us, which is very, very annoying. So we're gonna go to the R&D now and see if we can purchase anything. Is there anything over here? Yep, a really downforce upgrade. We're going not to, yeah, are we gonna do it? <clears throat> yes we are, we're going to get a rear downforce upgrade on the car and heading into the chassis department now um, anything here that we would like to be getting a minor tyre upgrade that is alright, is that it? is that all it is? Um, yes, that's all that we're going to be getting with the R and D side of things heading back to the a main screen, we have a marketing you see as your rival we need your input. I mean, after that race, the only logical thing to do is, um, well, he's in our range. The only logical person to have as a rival is going to be Daniel Ricardo. I mean, surely, because have you have you seen that race? Have Thanks. you seen that race with him? I appreciate you taking the time to help out. I appreciate you asking. Anyway, we're going to um, advance the time. And we're going to get to the 21st Our new parts are completed without issue. They'll be on the car the ready for French the next Grand race Prix. weekend. Got Pirelli hot lap. Are we going to do it? Potentially. Or maybe we'll skip it. We're going to, however, take a bunch of grid penalties into this one. And here's my strategy for the rest of the season. Take as many grid penalties as possible at the start and of the season. And capitalise at the end of the season when other people take good penalties so we, and we don't need to take good penalties because we've already taken our good penalties that, that that's my thinking i'm not sure if it will work but anyway that's me thanks for watching my name's flabbergast gaming subscribe like the video that's all optional i'll see you guys later